Hello, welcome back. We're at Beaver Creek and I'm with Rolin Bailey, the VP of Investor Relations. Rolin, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, kick things off, very brief overview. Who are Equinox Gold? Equinox Gold is a diversified America's gold producer. We've got seven operating mines. We're building our eighth mine. Uh, we're listed on the TSX and the NYSC American is EQX. Brilliant. Um, and just a bit of housekeeping, just, just go over the capital structure if you don't mind. I've got 313 million shares outstanding right now, and our uh, market cap's about 1, sorry, 1. 1.6 billion US, 2.1 Canadian. Okay, perfect. Um, we last had a chat with Greg this time last year at this conference. It was his first week in the role <laughs> as CEO, which is quite <laughs> insane. Uh, I guess for those um, who potentially haven't been following the story um, closely, what, what's, what's been happening over last year? Obviously, there's a big emphasis on Greenstone, but What's been the main themes that's happened? Greenstone is absolutely the main theme right now. So we started construction in October 2021. So 2022, our focus was uh, getting Greenstone advanced. We're 90% complete now. We were at site last week, brought 20 investors and analysts to site. It shows incredibly well. It was fantastic to see the progress in person. Um, it's the largest scale mine I've ever visited in person. So it was really great to see it. And uh, we're on track to pour gold in the first half of next year. Yeah, because this is huge, right? So it's a 400,000 ounce per year operation. Yeah. Uh, you own 60% of Orion Mine Finance. Right, own. so our share will be 240,000 ounces a year for yep. the first five years. Um, yeah, it's going to be absolutely a flagship project for us, our largest producer and also our lowest cost mine. And if you don't mind, just, just talk us through about production profile this year, because I, I want to go into Greenstone and, and remind people of the scale of this, but this is one of the steps towards Equinox from memory, getting towards a million ounces a year, right? Yeah, so, so we've got, we we got seven producing mines right now. We have two mines in uh, the United States, Mesquite and Castle Mountain, both open pit heat bleach mines that will produce just over 100,000 ounces a year, both of them together. We've got our large scale Los Filos mine in Mexico, an open pit and underground heat bleach operation that will produce about 160 to 170,000 ounces this year. Four mines in Brazil that will collectively produce over 300,000 ounces this year. Um, so all in, we're going to produce close to 600,000 ounces of gold this year at all in sustaining costs of around $1,600 per ounce. Mm -hmm. When Greenstone comes online next year, we won't have a full year of production. We're going to be pouring gold in the first half of the year, but it's going to be absolutely a step change for us in terms of both production growth. It'll add another 240,000 ounces when it's fully ramped up, but also reducing our overall cost because it will be our lowest cost mine. So in the grand scheme of things, we're looking to become, you know, a, we call ourselves, we're creating a premier America's gold producer. We want to be a diversified America gold producer with, uh, you know, we'll have eight operating mines with Greenstone, and we've got two other expansions to do on the back of that, a big expansion at Castle Mountain that'll add another 180,000 ounces for that mine, and again, significantly reduce the cost of that mine. Uh, we're doing a smaller expansion at Arizona in Brazil, where we're going to bring an underground deposit into production and a few extra satellite open pit deposits that will add about another 20 to 30,000 ounces a year from that mine, and then hopefully doing a big expansion at our Los Filos mine in Mexico that'll add about another 100 and 50,000 ounces from that mine. So put all those together, yep. looking down the road um, five to six years, we're hoping to be a million ounce a year gold producer with all in sustaining costs in the lower half of the industry. Yeah, I think, I think the all in sustaining costs is, is quite important, right? Because I think maybe you could talk a little bit about your current ASIC and, and where you think that will eventually, because obviously as you are building developing mines as well, obviously cash, cash costs are high, but you're sort of, especially with Greenstone being such a large mine and that going into production next year, how do you think that might change over time with the ASIC? Well, we haven't given guidance yet for what Greenstone costs will be like. So the last published technical report was published by Premier Gold, the previous owner, um, in 2020. So we'll be updating our production estimates and our operating cost estimates for Greenstone when we give our consolidated guidance next year. But it is going to be our lowest cost gold mine by quite a bit. So obviously adding you know, 240,000 ounces at low cost will bring down our all-in sustaining costs on a consolidated basis. But the other thing we're looking at is optimizing our producing assets. Obviously, like everybody around the world, but certainly in the mining industry, we had got hit with fairly significant inflation over the sure. last year and a half. We've seen that sort of peak and started to come down. So we, you know, costs should come down. But we're also putting in optimization projects, just trying to make sure that we're optimizing all of our mines and, and op, um, operating as efficiently as we possibly can be. The sort of analogy I give is over the last six years, we've been building this company, right? We started from like a single asset developer, now we've got seven mines in, in production and, and uh, three expansion projects underway. So 
we've been growing the company and now we're sort of maturing our operating structure and making sure that we circle back and make sure we have the best people in place and that each of our mines is operating as efficiently as possible with the intention of, of bringing down those costs um, in our producing assets and then snapping on those big expansion projects that are themselves higher producer, lower cost will further reduce the all and sustaining costs long term. Okay, um, just on the obviously financing of Greenstone, you're, you're fully funded now, right? You. Yeah, I think you've, you've already spent around 80% of the... Yeah, so at the end of June, which is our most recently re uh, reported quarter, we had spent $937 million on a 100% basis, so that was 70% of the overall budget. Our 60% re remaining share is $170 million this year and yes, next year to get that project through to completion. Okay, okay, fully funded, on time, on budget, which is yeah. good. Um, I guess one of the other things I saw as well was that you, I think you've consolidated some of the or sold some of the equity that you've had in other, was, has there been a bit of housekeeping I guess over the last year in terms of selling shares in other projects that you've owned? Well one of the things that we needed to do over the last year was make sure that we were in a very comfortable position during that peak Greenstone spending period so you know it, with these gold prices we're fully funded but if the gold price dropped at all we wanted to make sure that we had the financial flexibility in place to not get too skinny on our from a financial yep. perspective so we just sort of took incremental steps over the last 12 months to protect the company and protect um, protect that Greenstone spend. So at the end of Q2, again, our most recently reported quarter, we had $170 million in cash. We had $130 million left to draw on our revolver, which we did actually draw in August. We have another $100 million accordion feature on the revolver that we can draw if we need to. We put in a very small hedging program and luckily tapped it out almost at the peak of the market, so that goes from 1912 to 2110, I think, nice. per ounce. And that's just, just for one year, just 25% of our, of our production, which I think all in was about 150,000 ounces, so that we could you know, make sure that we were protected during that peak greenstone spend. We also um, softened some of our debt covenants, and those will go back into regular covenants once greenstone is done. Um, so just little incremental steps to make sure that we, you know, we're protecting the, the, the balance sheet. And was that hedge part of the, because there was also prepayment for gold as well, wasn't there? That's right, we did a $150 million yeah. prepay again just to bring some cash in the door. And it just is, you know, very modest um, production that will come out gradually just to make sure that we had that cash now. And it is, you know, it'll just be a drop in the bucket from a production perspective down the road. And in terms of guidance of free cash flow and things like that for this year and, and potentially, have you, have you, Produce any guidance for next year in terms of what we could. No, be so at. we do our we do our guidance every year in February, and we'll have all of our operating lines in there, and also we'll give our first guidance for Greenstone for you know when we expect to be commercial, how many ounces we can expect next year, and also it'll be the first update on what we think the operating costs will look like at that mine. So it's something that people are certainly looking forward yeah. to seeing. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to get my head around is obviously there's, there's been a quite a fast succession in terms of how fast you've grown, and, and you're now a, a, a pretty. I guess sizable mid-tier gold yeah, producer. Yeah, we're a solid mid-tier producer. What, what's the long-term ambitions for this company? Is, is it growth as, as you have been, or are you, are you pretty happy with the portfolio as it is? Or obviously, you've got a lot going on. In like terms from of an asset perspective? I guess so, yeah. So obviously, you've got a lot going on in terms of um, expansion projects. Um, and I think obviously that's obviously been a very core focus for you over the last year or two. I, when do you get to a point where you start looking for more assets or looking to, to expand your asset portfolio? Or, or is that still quite a while down the line? It's more a case of optimizing the portfolio. So yeah. when we started this company, I joined the company in 2016. It really kicked into high gear at the end of December 2017 when Ross Beatty joined as our chairman and our largest shareholder. And he said, look, let's build this into like the premier America's gold producer. We want to be a million ounce producer, maybe like four to six operating assets in, in multiple jurisdictions. So now we have, you know, a really solid business in Canada with, you know, Greenstone will be coming online in the United States with Castle Mountain and Mesquite in Mexico with Philos and then in Brazil with four operating mines. So we've got the diversified asset base that we wanted to have. We have an expansion project in each country. So Greenstone in Canada, Castle Mountain in the States, um, the Philos and then Arizona. So, uh, you know, our objective is to, at the end of our sort of, we've achieved what we wanted to achieve, we'll have our reserves and our production divided almost equally between those four mining friendly jurisdictions. And then it's looking back and saying, so how can we optimize the portfolio a little bit? So sort of our sweet spot 
from a mine by mine perspective is sort of 150 to 200,000 ounces a year. Um, we'll have that with Greenstone, Philos yep. when the expansion is done, Castle Mountain is going to be over 200,000 ounces. We like the longer year, the longer mine life, so having a 10 to 15 year mine life at each of the assets is sort of optimal to us. So we will certainly look back at the portfolio and look to see if there, if there, you know, if we need to divest anything or if there are other things that we want to snap into the asset base and ultimately also we'll be looking for that longer term exploration growth. So we do have a lot of exploration upside at, at all of our projects with underground opportunities or, or you know sort of regional satellite open pits that we could truck into the project so each of the projects does in itself have quite a bit of, a bit of expansion opportunity but you always want to be looking longer term because yep. that's the nature of mining you know it, it, we're depleting these resources so you always have to look to be replacing those reserves and resources yeah agreed but it's interesting with Equinox in a way because rather than looking outwards all the time to, to acquire which can be expensive if you've actually looked inwards and I guess in a, in a much more cost-efficient way actually being able to raise your production profile and, and expect production profile in the long term anyway. Yeah, awesome. and that's something we look for when we, when we do acquire assets is what, you know, what do they look like from initial mine life, but what are they going to look like longer term? Is, some, is there some way that we can add value either through exploration success or optimizing the asset? That's sort of how we built the company from the start was by buying assets that may have been in production historically, going back and looking at them, maybe doing a bit of re-engineering and sort of improving the production profile. Greenstone's the first one that we bought that we were, that we were basically building from scratch. It was very well advanced when we bought it. I mean, that's been a big key to the success there is before we even broke ground, they had 85% of the detailed engineering done, all the permits in place, it was shovel ready, had a team that had been on site for many of them over 10 years. So you had that sort of accountability and ownership of the project. So that's been one of the key things to being successful there. But, you know, we're, we'll certainly be looking as we, as the, you know, as we bring Greenstone on and hopefully we'll see a revaluation on our share price because it's a big, chunky, long life, low cost mine in Canada, which should fetch a premium in the market. As we bring Greenstone on and we hopefully see our share price um, build up a little bit, we will start to look around if there's any other tier one assets that we can snap into the portfolio, but we certainly have enough already built in place right now. And I think that's one of the key things I like to remind people is we've had a lot of M&A over the last six years, but now we have all of the growth already built into the portfolio that yep. we need to achieve that million ounce target. Awesome. Um, just, just to wrap things up, I guess, well, what should we look now for over the next six, 12 months? Well, somebody asked me that yesterday. They're like, what are you excited about for yeah. next year beside Greenstone? I'm like, Greenstone, really? Like, it's, it's, <laughs> been, uh, it's been all about Greenstone for the last year, and everybody's just so excited to see it come to fruition to, and, you know, to be on time and on budget when so few companies have been able to do that in Canada is really exciting. So first half of next year, we're all going to be waiting for that first gold pour and then the announcement that we're commercial. Um, we're, you know, again, optimizing our other assets, so hopefully we'll start to see that. Uh, reflected in our guidance with hopefully you know slightly lower costs next, next year and then continuing to decrease those costs over time. Um, we'll be starting Arizona underground expansion work next year so we're going to be doing our first portal development initially as an exploration portal so that we can get some bulk samples to feed that information through to the feasibility study but it'll be sized big enough that that will also be turned into the underground um, access for the underground mine. Yeah, so I don't think we're ever going to have a quiet day no. at this company, um, but it's exciting and to see, you know, we've all been working hard, but to see that we're starting to see that success and see that reflected in, in our portfolio is really rewarding. Agreed. Thank you for your time. Pleasure.